three things Genesis is not. First of all, Genesis is not a science textbook. There's a major debate about the age of the earth. Was it created billions of years ago or a few thousand years ago? What does Genesis teach? Well, the answer is it doesn't. It's not concerned with that question. Some people try to find advanced science in Genesis, but there's no discussion of DNA in Genesis, no explanation of the genome. The book was written in the context of the ancient Near East, and it was meant to be understandable in that cultural context. For example, Genesis describes two great lights, the greatest light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. Well, is the moon a light? Not technically, it's a rock, it reflects light. You see, the Bible describes the way things appear from a human perspective, not from what they are scientifically. The Bible is not meant to teach us science. If that were its purpose, it would be outdated within a generation since science is constantly changing. Second principle or perspective, Genesis is not a history textbook. It's not meant to give us a chronology of human history. The Bible doesn't tell us about many major events or major figures in history. We don't get a list of the great pharaohs of Egypt or the great dynasties of China. We don't hear of Hammurabi or Genghis Khan. And the people in the Bible are relative unknowns. We don't find Abraham mentioned outside the Bible. He was a shepherd, a nomad. We don't find Moses mentioned outside the Bible. Genesis is not a detailed account of world history. It's instead salvation history, the story of God's plan to save mankind. Third principle or perspective, Genesis is not a model for Christian behavior. That is, it's not an ethics textbook. In our Sunday school mentality, we sometimes want to find a moral lesson in every story. But there are many things that people do in Genesis that are not meant to be emulated. We see major characters doing some really bad stuff. I made a short list. Adam and Eve ignore God's commands and listen to a snake. Cain kills his brother Abel. Noah gets drunk and gets naked. You don't want to know. Abraham passes his wife, Sarah, off as his sister. Lot offers his daughters to a group of rapists. Lot's daughters then get dad drunk and sleep with him. Isaac imitates his father, Abraham, and passes off his wife, Rebecca, as his sister. After their sister is raped, two of Jacob's sons get revenge by massacring an entire town. Joseph's brothers sell him into slavery. Jacob's son Judah sleeps with his daughter-in-law, Tamar, and has a child by her. But it's okay because she was pretending to be a prostitute. Okay, these are not good things. These are not people to be emulated. What we see is God using really flawed people to accomplish his good purposes. This is a crucial point. This book is not about great human heroes of the faith. It's about our great God's extraordinary grace poured out on human beings.